This is Matthew from Blue Matador, the Alert Automation Service. RDS is Amazon's managed relational database service. While RDS manages your database's maintenance, uptime, and upgrade, it is your responsibility to determine the cluster's scale and capacity. So the big question is, when do you need to scale up? I've launched a test cluster in my account. Let's navigate to the monitoring tab. Understanding all of these metrics can be daunting, but we won't be looking at all of them. At minimum, you must understand and monitor seven metrics for each server in your cluster. Let's look at those seven metrics. First, database connections. DB connections are the current number of clients connected to your database. When you're looking at the number of connections, make sure to select the maximum statistic. Each connection takes significant memory, so the number of connections is limited. Here are the default limits for each instance type. To see the actual limits, check your specific server configuration. Servers within a cluster can be configured differently. In my Aurora cluster, the writer on the left is a T3 small, and the reader on the right is a T3 medium. You can see the limit in each case, but CloudWatch does not expose this. Exceeding the limit is impossible. Any new connections after the limit will be rejected, and an error will occur in your application. Freeable memory includes free, cached, and buffered memory. When looking at free freeable memory, make sure to select the minimum statistic. It represents the total amount of memory up for grabs at any given time. Upon reaching zero, the server will either start swapping memory to disk, or it will restart the database server altogether. CPU credit balance only applies to T1, T2, and T3 instances. It represents the amount of burstable CPU remaining. Your credits start at zero and accumulate over time. When you run out of CPU credits, the virtual machine your database is running on will be throttled, impacting the performance of your database. Upgrading to another instance type is required to permanently fix this throttling. Free local storage is disk space. Your instance type and disk space scale independently. Increasing the size of your instance doesn't give you more disk space, and increasing the disk space doesn't give you more memory, CPU, or connections. Replica lag is important for read replicas and data resiliency. It's possible to have a larger writer than reader, or vice versa, as I have here. If your reader cannot keep up with the writes and additional read load, it will fall behind and serve stale data. Depending on your storage engine, increasing replica lag can also mean data loss, if a master were to die. Commit latency is the amount of time it takes to apply a single insert, update, or delete statement, or an entire transaction if you're using them. In the likely event of EBS degradation, network unavailability, or other problems with writing, this is one of the first metrics that will be affected. Select latency is similar to commit latency, but for select statements. It's good to monitor both commit and read latency. For each of these seven metrics, on each server, in each of your clusters, you'll need to set up monitoring and notifications with the appropriate thresholds and behaviors that your app requires. It's a headache to get those thresholds correct now and manage them as you scale up. Every time you scale up, you must manually adjust the thresholds on your existing alarms to match the new limits and capacities, or simply use Blue Matador. We create, manage, and fine-tune thresholds for all of these metrics and more out of the box. Thanks for watching. If you'd rather not spend time on alarms, thresholds, and notifications, try Blue Matador, the alert automation service. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for more videos.